For the last lesson of chapter 2, we're going to be comparing and ordering rational numbers. So for the first thing, we're going to be comparing fractions, then comparing decimals, and then ordering fractions and decimals. First thing is for comparing fractions. So it asks us to compare the fraction, right, either less than or greater than. There also might be some equal to as well, if, if that ever comes up. Uh, here we have 5 6 and we have 7 8 The way to figure this out, which one is uh, bigger than the other one, is to find a common denominator. So we have a denominator of 6 and we have a denominator of 10. And this one, you might have to write them all out. You do 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 10, 20, 30. You might have to write those out to do it. Just write the multiples down and look for a common denominator. Uh, but I know that 6 and 10, they both go into 30. So we say 30 would be the denominator that we want for both. So I'm going to write that down. Okay, so always when you do this, you say, what did I multiply 6 times to get to 30? Well, 6 times 5 is 30, so I have to do 5 times 5. So that would be 25 over 30. I multiplied 10 times 3 to get to 30. So 7 times 3 would be 21. So then we ask which one's bigger. And now it becomes pretty obvious. 25 is bigger than 21. Remember, you only look at the numerators uh, when deciding which one is bigger when you have a same denominator. Here we have two negative ones. And for the negatives, it's always important to know it's that it's the one that's further to the right in the number line. You might have a bigger negative than the other one, but that means it's actually smaller because it's a because negatives go off to the left in the number line. So let's solve it this way. We have negative three fifths, negative five ninths. Uh, common denominator, if you do nine times five, it'd be 45. So let's go with that. So denominator 45, denominator 45. So we did 5 times 9, so that would be 3 times 9, which would be 27. And we did 9 times 5, so 5 times 5 would be 25. And remember, these are both negative, so I'll write that in. All right, then it becomes pretty clear. This is the bigger negative, but that means it's further left than the number line, right? The bigger the negative is the further left. We want the one that's on the right then. So we would actually choose greater than for this. And I'll write these in. Now we're comparing decimals. When comparing decimals, some of them are going to be pretty close to each other. So the thing you need to do is look for the differences and where, where those differences are. Okay, so you always start from the left and you go to the right in each decimal. Okay, the whole numbers are exactly the same, so that's the same so far. The tenths place is an 8, and here is it also an 8. The hundreds place, though, is a 1, and then that's a 4. So then the 84, point 84 would be the greater one. Here we have a one with a repeating decimal, and that's uh, important to note. Uh, we have 0.34 repeating, so you do this, 0 0.343434, write it out a few times. And we have now 0 0.342. All right, so we look at the go left to right again. So 0 and 0 are the same. 3 and 3 are the same. In the hundreds place, it's 4 and 4, so far the same. Now we have a 3 after that, and we have a 2 over here. So that would mean this one over here is the bigger one because the three is bigger than the two in the thousands place. Now we have these four numbers to order from least to greatest. We have three fifths, 0 0.77, negative 0 0.1, and one and one fifth. When you have a mix of fractions and decimals, it's always good to turn them all either into fractions or all into decimals. And since turning a fraction into a decimal is easier because it's an unfinished division problem, I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to turn them all into decimals. So 3 divided by 5, if you do that, you're going to get 0 0.6. All right, so it would be 0 0.6 for 3 fifths. So 0 0.6, you have 0 0.77, negative 0 0.1, and then 1 and 1 fifth. So it would be 1 point what? 1 divided by 5 would be 2. So 1.2. All right, so now we have these four numbers, 0 0.6, 0 0.77, negative 0 0.1, and 1.2. Remember, it's always going from left to right on a number line is how you're ordering these. So the furthest left on the number line would be the negative, right? So this would be the first one, negative 0 0.1. That would be followed with by the smallest one next. So that would be 0 0.6 because the zeros are the same, but then the 6 is smaller than the 7. So 0 0.6. And then that's followed by, we have a 1 in the whole number, and we have a 0 in the whole number, so it would be 0 0.77, and then 1.2. So this would be left to right on a number line following this order.